this is a weird video for me to make and I'm in a weird place as a fan of hockey and as of a Jets fan and more of just you know trying to find myself as well as a content creator because I don't really know if the Jets have a chance going into the series against the Oilers in the first round of the 2021 NHL Stanley Cup playoffs and that has nothing to do with me being pessimistic and me being not a real fan or a bandwagon or anything like that it's more to do with the fact that I don't believe in the direction of this team currently and I don't think I'm alone with that. There are a lot of other people that agree with my gripes with this club and the organization and this the coaching and how it's run. But that doesn't mean that I am some hateful Jets fan that doesn't want to see this team succeed. Because although I'm a realist and I don't see a lot of success between coming to this team in these years' playoffs, I still think that this team, with as loaded up as it is offensively and a goaltender like Connor Hellebuck, anything's hot possible, especially in hockey. It's the magic sport for a reason. You never know when a backup goaltender is going to have to get injured and you're going to have to have a Zamboni driver come in and get you a win against the Toronto Maple Leafs, the team that employs you. So you never know what could happen. We're in This league is a Disney movie. Hell, they, they literally Disney owned a team because hockey is so much like a Disney movie and all that being said anything can happen and I want to talk about in this video what I think the Jets can do to help them you know stand a chance and maybe put up a better fight than maybe just winning one game potentially in this seven game series that they're going to be facing with the Oilers coming up very soon and I feel like there are a few key things that the Jets can do that they've been doing pretty well all season long and if they can just amp that up a little bit and propel them to the next level I think it could really help them advance in this year's playoffs or potentially look more competent than what they actually are putting on the ice and I think the big thing that's going to come from this Oilers matchup and I've talked about it on my recent episode of the Prairie Puck podcast and that has to do with with scoring when the top line is off. Now, if McDavid averaged two points a game against the Jets this year in nine games, you know you're going to be screwed against that top line because if you can limit McDavid to even two goals, say, on that line, potentially, that's the, how many they score, then you have a chance to score three or four. That's what Coach was talking about on the podcast. He's right, stealing the thoughts out of my head as usual. And with all that being said, you need to look at the way the Jets play with their depth compared to the depth the Oilers have. Now, don't get me wrong, Oilers fans. I think you guys have a great team, but you still have holes. I think if you're a real hockey fan, you'll know where the holes are. You've got a great cast of guys down there in your bottom six, but they're not the most elite guys to have on a cup-winning team. Let's be real. You could upgrade down there. And that's where the Jets come in, and they kind of thrive. When you look at the Jets' bottom six and the guys that are potentially playing there once injuries come back and whatnot, you've got so much scoring power there that it, you have to take advantage of those lines. If you can get Lowry scoring some goals, Cop scoring some goals, you get Appleton on a little bit of a run, kind of like what we saw with Brendan Tanev that year we went to the Western Conference Final. You get some good depth scoring and some clutch plays being made by your third and fourth line. I think that this team can maybe get use that as a secret weapon to propel them against the Oilers because the Oilers are top heavy. We all know that. And when you're dealing with top heavy teams, the most important thing you can have in the National Hockey League or in any hockey league is good depth that can take advantage of weakness. And if the Oilers' depth weakness on this team, their main weakness, is depth then you have to take advantage of their weak depth and try to score when you're matching up. If you're going to be having the Lowry line matching up against McDavid per se, and you're going to have your top line going out potentially against the third line of Edmonton, or maybe even the second line more than this first line, depending on how you match your defensive pairings and all these different coaching implements that are going to have to be put in when they play the Oilers and they actually start game one. When you have all those variables and you look at the Jets' bottom pairing and how many, the bottom pairing, excuse me, bottom six offense, and think how well they can score, that's the secret weapon. That's kind of the secret sauce that we need to come in and maybe save us potentially because the top lines we know are most likely going to stay the same and if there's one thing those top lines don't do well is play consistent offensive two-way hockey we know that you can see it Blake Wheeler has the worst defensive stats in the entirety of the NHL for forwards and that says a lot about just his game and whatnot and how he plays so because of that you need to have good scoring a good depth good defensive play from your bottom lines if your bottom lines are going to be matching up and giving it's McDavid that's going to be tough, right? But then if you have your offense matching up against potentially your third line or wherever your top line is matching up against the offense line, as you like to say, even though they don't provide that much offense at times, that's where you can make your bread and butter. That's where you can win the series. If you take advantage of the Oilers' weakness in their depth, that's the only chance the Jets have at really having any success in this playoff series. Because let's be real, when you look at how they've been able to combat teams like the Leafs, it's been through depth scoring and clutch plays from Appleton, Lowry, Kopp, and even going back to plays like Lewis and Thompson. Because players like Lewis and Thompson and can do one thing right in the playoffs it's show up and play meaningful hockey when they actually you know need to play meaningful hockey these guys are vets they know what they're doing and lewis is a shorthanded goal specialist if we can get a, a one even one 
game where Trevor Lewis can score a shorthanded goal, that is huge for this club. Absolutely huge for them. That would be huge for the morale. It kind of is a big, big damper on the Oilers bench. And you need that type of play from these guys. That's the reason why they've been playing so many games. Is why you have them in. If they're, they're just spe- if you're their if you're their penalty kill specialist, and that's the guys you want out if you're Paul Maurice, you need to have them score goals as well. So hopefully that can happen because if you can get a good blend of scoring and offense being generated from your bottom three, two pairing, two lines, excuse me. I keep thinking about pairings. I got defense on the brain. All that being said, when you go and have your two the bottom lines rolling out and you have them scoring goals and taking advantage of weaker opponents, that is where you can make your success in the playoffs if you're a team that struggles offensively at times. Because let's be real, although Kyle Connor, Blake Wheeler, Mark Shifley especially, have been able to get points throughout this drought, they haven't been consistent as a line. And that's important. You need consistency in the playoffs. You can't just rely on a couple players unless you're the Oilers and you're built for that, right? The Jets aren't. So if you don't have these top lines playing well, you need the bottom six to play well. You don't need dump and chase. You need driving to the net hard. You need good, gritty play off type plays in the boards to help generate scoring maybe dropping it to the blue line resetting shots on net not just dumping the puck around the boards if you are able to do that and you're able to do that successfully you might be able to take advantage of the Oilers because when you look at the Oilers and the Edmonton and excuse me the Oilers playing the Toronto Maple Leafs the Toronto Maple Leafs were able to shut down McDavid and when they were able to shut down McDavid the team crumbled around them and because their offense relies off of McDavid even Drysdale at times relies off of McDavid to generate chances for him and I'm not saying Drysdale doesn't generate his own because believe me he does but that doesn't mean that McDavid isn't a crew crucial part of all the cogs in the machine in Edmonton. Because let's be real, you take out McDavid on that machine, that cog, you take that out, the whole thing won't work because their whole offense is based off of McDavid and how he moves the puck, how he can pick up the puck in his own end, how he moves with his skates, how he passes. Everything is built around McDavid, what he sees on the ice, and what they run. Because they can turn up the puck from the, their goal line to yours in less than five seconds. And if they can do that and you're a dump and chase, slow defensive team like what we see from Forber, Ben, and even Stanley at times, then you and Pullman too, then you're going to struggle. And I've talked about that a lot. So if you're going to have any way to combat McDavid, you need to be able to p- shut him down, play your defensive lines, play them properly and use them properly. Don't put out Shifley to play defense with Wheeler. You gotta use your bottom six, because your bottom six is what's gonna make or break the series. If the bottom six has a good series, and they're actually able to play meaningful, important hockey, and able to shut down McDavid, even for, say, two games, the Jets off, and the Jets off, the Jets can do the rest, right? Because if we all have faith in the offense, and then that's the one thing we believe in, even in the struggles and the times we've had over the last 15 games of the regular season, if you believe in the offense, and even I believe to an extent that the offense is still good underneath this flaws you have to have you know your bottom six come up and play well if your bottom six is able to contribute offensively and a shut down mcdavid to an extent because you're never going to shut down the guy completely let's be real he's that dynamic he's that great so if you can do that the jets do have a chance other than that the oilers most likely will if you can't do that and you can't play that style of hockey you can't adapt you can't use your lines accordingly and match them up properly if you're paul maurice and huddy and structuring your defensive structure and whatnot throughout the entire team top line to your bottom pairing you're going to fail in the playoffs because connor hellebuck can only do so much so much against a goal scorer of the caliber of McDavid and Dreisaitl. Those guys are going to pick their goals, they're going to score, and if they're going to score, you need to be able to, you know, combat with goals because let's be real if you're going to give up five goals a game you got to be able to score six to win right and that's the Jets identity kind of as a defense at times scoring goals but that's what killed them in the losing streak not being able to score goals consistently from your top players so if the top players don't show up the bottom six needs to and if the bottom six shows up and we can generate some goals from them and then we can get some decent defensive play from all of our forwards including the top six Wheeler has to show up a two a little bit he's got to get those numbers up even though we probably won't we still got to get him up a bit if you can have that from your team Team, I think the Jets do have a chance, even though they most likely won't because they've been creamed in every category. They haven't been able to adapt so far, and that's why I'm so pessimistic, right? I could say all these things. This is the, my biggest only card I have, wild card I have if you're the Jets, is if your top six shows up and plays the way we saw when Cop was on that run, Lowry was on that run, even Appleton, right? If those guys, if that's the version of those players you're getting, you have a chance. Other than that, if your top six fizzles out and you can't get any offense from them, and the bottom six kind of stays the same, dump and chase, not great offense at times, very slow, then you're not going to succeed against the Oilers. The Oilers have shown that they will dominate. They've won seven out of the... Uh, we've, they've won seven games. Scored 37 goals again, so I get for the Jets. That's a lot of offense, and McDavid has gotten 27 of those points. If you can't shut down those guys, you will going to get screwed. So you have to be able to play hockey and play good defensive playoff hockey, and if the bottom six can show up, generate these chances potentially, I think they might have a chance to maybe make this game, not be four to five games, but maybe potentially draw it out to even a six or hypothetically a seven. Who knows how it swings? Anything possible in the NHL. It's important to know that, but with all that being said, 
realistically, I don't see much in the Jets, but I got to be you know, as a fan. I got to root for my home team still, and I got to put faith in them and believe in them. Even though know, if I don't have that much faith in their whole organization right now, I believe in this team because they're my team, and I'm interested to see what they're able to generate going into the series. It's going to be interesting to see what happens because this is a make or break point in the franchise, the real first one we've had in a while. If they lose again, all hell could break loose this summer. And if you bet your ass, if all hell breaks loose, I'm going to be covering it on YouTube for you guys. So with all that being said, I'm going to end the video here. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And subscribe regardless of the team you root for as we're trying to push towards that 1K subscriber goal. And any support you can give the channel is always greatly appreciated. With all that being said, make sure to subscribe for daily Winnipeg Jets and NHL-related content. Live streaming every playoff game that I can. So make sure to turn on notifications if you haven't already. And stay tuned for that on game day. And with all that being said, follow my socials down in the description below. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, love, and positivity as always. Have a wonderful rest of your day whenever you're watching this, and bye-bye.